Good evening. Tonight I'm going to be talking to you about my reading plans for August. So this is a this month I have a dual agenda, and I'm not sure how much these two uh, concepts are going to overlap, but hopefully it'll happen to some degree. So first off, it's August, which means it is prime spooky season in Japan. Um, like all the major movies that are horror movies get released, like big budget ones get released around now. Uh, you can just see if you walk around places they tend to advertise things related to kind of like ghost stories and so on um, and I remember once in my like favorite cafe a few years ago back when going to cafes was a thing um, like they just with my order they gave me a little card which had a ghost story printed on it which I absolutely loved though I couldn't read it because my Japanese is trash but point is yeah like now is the time to do spooky things which sounds kind of strange to people from uh, cultural background where we have, you know, the harvest season based uh, festivals like Halloween and so on. Um, but that's how it is. Yeah, like kind of for the West, I think like things get spooky as it gets colder. But like in East Asia, you do scary. Well, like, all the like main festivals for the dead tend to be around like midsummer, uh, including in Japan, like there's a like important festival um, called Obon where people go back uh, to meet their families and be with relatives and like honor their ancestors and so on. Uh, so that's coming up later this month. But anyway, I, I'm convinced that there is a connection between that and the horror kind of stuff that happens. But if you ask any Japanese person, they'll tell you that it's just because summer is the ideal time to get kind of spooky chills so you can cool down your body, which I really want right now. So. I'm not sure about the physiological benefits of horror media, but I definitely want to be consuming it. So I hope that I can be doing some spooky reading this month. Uh, also, just any excuse to do something spooky, to be honest. Like, I can't really wait till Halloween. It takes too long. In any case, I wanted to keep my reading seasonal and find something spooky to enjoy. But at the same time, uh, it happens to be Women in Translation Month, which I really want to participate in. So those are like my two agendas. Like, on the one hand, I've got the spooky material that I want to read, and on the other hand, uh, I want to read stuff which has been translated uh, into the language that I can understand, which is English, uh, written by women writers. So, hmm, I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to kill two birds with one stone here and do something which meets both categories. I kind of feel it might be difficult given the limitations of my library's English section, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what I can do. In the meantime, I raided my bookshelves to see what books I could find by Women in Translation, uh, and this is what I came up with, these five books. So I'll introduce them now. To begin with, I have one I just finished and talked about in an earlier video, which I'll put up in the corner over there, uh, Tokyo Ueno Station by Yu Miri. This book uh, is about a Go the ghost of a homeless man who lives in Tokyo Ueno Park and is sort of a stream of consci consciousness, stream of consciousness, modernist style novel, like going through his memories and impressions and him kind of wondering why he's still there even though he's died. And it's, uh, yeah, it's not scary or kind of spooky really in any way, but it's got a ghost in it and it's a book in, you know, a recent book that's written by a woman that's been translated into English, so I think it's a pretty good start for me. Next, what do we have? I have this I talked also about in another video, which I'll also link to in the corner. Um, Japanese Poetic Diaries. So there's one here by uh, Izumi Shikibu, who I just, I had to give up on this. I was, I was reading it years ago, and then this bookmark has been in this bit of the book for actual years, because I, I just found it quite dull and, and you know it's Heian period like really old school stuff so and it's like a diary like interspersed with poetry lots of love poems and um, there were poems which were like really like kind of bursts of sunshine through a grey and dreary fog bank but in general I just couldn't get into it I remember there's this like one poem that really like made me laugh about a cock or a rooster if you're American um, and it was, uh, yeah, I posted it all over my social media and stuff like that, but that re I really don't remember much else about this uh, diary of her love life. So I'm, but I'm determined to finish it. I'm not the kind of person who likes 
or who's comfortable with even leaving books unfinished. Although I know a lot of people are, and I think I'm, I'm really envious. I wish I was like that so that I didn't have to push through things that weren't like grabbing my attention. But I want to I wanna get through it, so I will. Even though it's not long, it's just like 100 pages, I think, this diary. But I will finish that this month, I've decided. Um, what's up next? We've got Sazaya-san. Sazaya-san, for those who don't know, is a really popular Japanese comic. I think this is my sister's book. I don't know who, where I got this. I'm pretty sure I got this from the UK and brought it with me to Japan because it's a dual language edition. So it's got like the comics uh, like translated into English, but then with like little Japanese in the margins there. I wish it was the other way around because that would be really good for my language learning. Um, but yeah, I've been... I, I've kind of dipped into it before but never properly read it but the writer uh what was her name hasegawa hasegawa something <laughs> hasegawa machiko or machiko hasegawa yeah she seems to be like a really cool person like who was she actually this was actually originally uh invented like she came up with the idea and wrote the first strips of sazaya san here in fukuoka where i live so that's pretty cool as well because it's such a huge thing in japan um and it's like yeah, kind of like capture the spirit of the post-war period and she just seems like a really cool person and they're little funny things so hopefully I can get at least a lot of this done in the month. Here's another book I've already read, uh, The Word Book by Mieko Kanai. This is one of my absolute favorite books of all time. I, there are, I really only have a few books which are at the absolute highest tier of excellence and this is there with them. It's a sh book of short stories and it's also kind of a novel because there are themes and ideas which just like kind of start to like recur and like build as as you go through it like you've got unifying themes of identity and um writing that's a huge thing in this and also like just this sense of like what impact other people have on our lives or on ourself you know like how they you know, the impact of other people kind of shatter who we are and like reform us. There's one that I really love where there's a boy who has to go get milk uh, for his mother and like the the route that he takes like kind of keeps, they keep repeating the, dis the physical description of the route like oh turn left here and then there's this kind of tree here and then oh watch out for this rock where sometimes you trip and you know because I know if I'll trip then I'll drop the milk and and like this kind of his 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 feelings and his thoughts keep replaying and by the end of the story as well like there's moments where suddenly he he's a fully grown man looking back on these memories and this these sort of impressions of getting milk for his mother who is now dead and he's still holding the milk in his hand like an idiot and like it's just it's it just this sort of weird like this use of repetition to create like different worlds is incredible um, within the same kind of individual's experience. Also kind of interesting that almost all, I think maybe all of the narrators are men. If not all of them, then almost all of them. Which is quite interesting, I think. But anyway, yeah, it's one of my favorite books. And I often like kind of go back to it and just, you know, dip into it and read a paragraph or two and it always cheers me up. So all of those books are Japanese, are they? Yeah, they're, they're, all of those books are Japanese. Um, except for the, the last one, which is by Clarice Lispector. Um, and it's the complete short stories by Clarice Lispector. I really hate the cover of this book. Um, you know, like she's renowned for being like a really beautiful, glamorous woman. Um, but like, I don't know what they, what they were thinking with this. It's just pretty ugly and weird, but yeah. Um, like even on the back, they've got like a picture of her looking absolutely gorgeous compared to the, the, the illustration and yeah, but anyway, the stories are like I've I've read about this I don't know on the internet somewhere. Also, some kind of like experimental stuff here and like like just really strange ideas and like vivid language. A lot of focus on women and like women's roles. Like in the first section that I've read so far, there's been two stories where they kind of follow a similar traje trajectory where there's a woman and she falls in love with a man and like the man's kind of knowledge and teachings really shape her and her sense of who she is but then she kind of like outgrows him and then you know although that's like the basis for like her her sense of self she like kind of 
ends up breaking up with him or leaving him and finding other things because you know she's like she's an independent person so this is like a kind of a really interesting feminist streak that's run through a lot of what i've read so far and then there's also like just crazy ones there's one about like these cockroaches and she she starts the story like five different times or something and like every time it's the same story of cockroaches in an apartment but told from a different kind of perspective and from a different kind of like writerly style as well like it's really and it's really good and it's only like two or three pages but it was incredible i forget what it was called but anyway so yeah i'm not gonna finish this book i'm pretty sure because it's huge and it's everything and also it's short stories so you don't want to like read them all in a go you want to like read a bit and then like leave it to like kind of soak in you know and then you know change your palette with something else and then come back to the short stories other you know so it's like definitely not like a novel i want to read a bunch of short stories this month but i don't want to finish this whole thing so what i've got is two books that i've already read and a diary that i'm gonna definitely push through and finish but i'm not so excited about uh and Sazaya san which i don't know if i'll finish again because yeah it's like kind of little bits of well both of these they're like kind of they're they're fragments. They're not something that you really want to read all in one huge block. But I definitely will read both of them uh, this month, even if I don't finish them. So basically, I am short some books. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I want to do something spooky. So I'm going to go to the library tomorrow. I'm going to see what I can find. Hopefully, there will be something that fits the bill. I'm, I'm really hoping there is, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to find that. Also, like I'm, I'm very aware that my list is not diverse, and I kind of I mean it makes sense that I live in Japan I study Japanese culture and so on but I would really like to find books by women that you know don't just come from Japan so you know my my absolute ideal book when I go to the library tomorrow would be something that satisfies both the spooky needs and the gender needs and the translation needs and also not be Japanese so I think I'm really I'm really kind of asking a lot here, but we'll see how it goes. I drink these every night. They're not really beer. They're like, like can you see that? Beer like alcoholic beverage. It sounds awful in English, but you know, it's almost like beer. Pretty much like beer. It's cheaper than beer. There are also three prompts. I'll read them. Uh, for connected to the books you read in Women in Translation Month. Prompt number one, read a book published by an independent press. Number two, read a genre title, like romance, sci-fi, whatever. And number three, read a book that was published in its original language pre-2000. So for number one, the independent press, and number three, the old book, that will be no problem for me, but for number two, I don't have anything, and if I can find a horror book, that would actually be perfect for my own kind of, my own well-being. So that's my plan. Hopefully I can find some stuff. Um, and then with that, all I want to say is Happy Mountain Day. Today is Yama no Hi, or Day of the Mountain in Japan, which you're supposed to do to celebrate uh, mountains and like you know just appreciate how great mountains are which I think is a great holiday yeah it's a national holiday today it sounds like the kind of thing that you know like it goes back to like Shinto religious festivals hundreds of years old but actually it's like a really new thing I think it was 2014 that they invented it because in Japan you know they have this issue of people working themselves to death because of like the work culture and stuff and so there, you know, the government was trying out different ways to get people to not work so much. And, you know, coming up with new holidays was one of them. But I'm glad that they chose Mountain Day. That's really cool, I think, because mountains are great. And we should, like, just appreciate mountains. So, yeah, uh, it was raining today, so I didn't go see any mountains, but I thought about them. And uh, I hope you do, too. Mountains are just so great. So with that said and done, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. I mean, if push comes to shove, then I'll just watch a lot of horror movies this month you know and that'll probably satisfy that that august urge um but it would be really cool if i could you know like get the reading get the reading also horror themed although i've never really found any 
scary books like i'm not really into scary books i'm into scary things but like not books weirdly like i've never read anything by stephen king apart from like one short story once ages ago so yeah i don't know i don't know why it's just never really worked out for me but maybe this is the month that all of that changes anyway happy mountain day see you next time